Today we're comparing the cameras of the iPhone 12 mini, iPhone 12 Pro and iPhone 12 Pro Max. Other than the usual clever marketing by Apple, is there really any difference between these cameras? The answer may surprise you. We are going to be testing dynamic range, audio, stabilization, directional audio and more. Time codes in the description below if you want to skip to that section. The Pro Max features a 0.5 ultra wide, a 1x wide and a 2.5x telephoto lens. The Mini, similar to the regular iPhone 12, features a 0.5 ultra wide, a 1x wide and no telephoto lens here. The Pro features a 0.5 ultra wide, a 1x wide and a 2x telephoto lens. Let's take a look at the footage shot through the ultra-wide 0.5x camera. All three of these lenses feature a 2.4 aperture. Given the bright background of the sunset, the dynamic range is quite impressive across all the cameras, which are surprisingly similar. Tell us in the comments if you can spot a difference between the three cameras. Let's change the cameras to a one times wide angle camera. This is the best camera for low light with its impressive 1.6 aperture lenses. The color science on the Mac seems to be a little bit more pleasing to me, whilst the Pro in the middle seems to be less saturated. Notice the infamous camera flare and reflection spots. We are switching here from the 1x wide lens to the 2x and 2.5x zooms on the Pro and the Pro Max. This shows the furthest optical zoom that each of the cameras can achieve without resorting to lossy quality digital zoom. The Pro features a 2.0 aperture lens, whilst the Pro Max features a 2.2 aperture lens, which suggests that the Pro may actually perform better in low light on this lens than the Pro Max. Remember, the smaller number means more light can enter the lens. The color signs and exposures vary greatly when switching between the different cameras, as they are each letting in different amounts of light into the sensor. In bright daylight, when we are using the same focal length for each of the phones, the quality of the cameras is quite similar, which is surprising given the difference in price between each of the phones. The iPhone 12 series boasts a pleasing, slightly warm, saturated look and feel that gives a romantic vibe ready to be shared on the socials. If you are into color grading your footage in post-production, you will most likely want to download a third-party app like Filmic Pro which will give you more creative controls over the color science and bit rate. Let's test out some audio. All right, this is an audio test. I'm right now about a meter and a half away. All right, this is an audio test. I'm right now about a meter and a half away. All right, this is an audio test. I'm right now about a meter and a half away. Now about three meters away. How do I sound? Can you guys still hear me well? Now about three meters away. How do I sound? Can you guys still hear me well? Now about three meters away. How do I sound? Can you guys still hear me well? I'm about five meters away. I'm not gonna talk loud. I wanna see if you guys will be able to hear. I'm about five meters away. I'm not gonna talk loud. I wanna see if you guys will be able to hear. I'm about five meters away. I'm not gonna talk loud. I wanna see if you guys will be able to hear. Let's test directional audio. The joke is about a guy who robbed a bank and the police comes after him and he hides up on the tree and then the police tells him to come down and he says, the joke is about a guy who robbed a bank and the police comes after him and he hides up on the tree and then the police tells him to come down and he says the joke is about a guy who robbed a bank and the police comes after him and he hides up on the tree and then the police tells him to come down and he says Let's test out the autofocus speed as we can see from these clips, the cameras generally have a snappy autofocus, though in some cases the iPhone Pro does not focus on the foreground subject. Let's freeze that frame so you don't miss this.
Let's test out the stabilization of the three cameras. The Pro and the Pro Max cameras feature dual optical image stabilization on wide and telephoto lenses. The Pro Max features a sensor shift optical image stabilization on its wide lens. Is it just me? I'm really struggling to find much difference between the three cameras stabilization. I wanted to test whether we could see any difference with and without the sensor shift stabilization. On the left we have the iPhone 12 mini without sensor shift and on the right we have the iPhone 12 Pro Max with sensor shift. Both are on the one times lens. Here I am walking and here I am running. What are your thoughts? Can you spot the difference? Let us know in the comments below. Front facing camera guys. One thing I can notice is that my coat on the camera is lighter. Also Steven's coat, come here Steven. Also Steven's coat's looking like gray, but it's actually pitch black. Let me try go to the road and see if there is any difference in stabilization. Should be smoother. I don't know. Let's try. And now let's jog. How about slow motion? Each of these iPhones produces silky smooth 4K 60 frames per second video in good lighting. Usually slow motion video suffers from image quality issues. However, the video is surprisingly good quality. Here we have a special guest, Charlie, posing in our 240 frames per second video. The slow motion on each of these cameras is again silky smooth, but we can see the video quality degrades at this extremely high frame rate. Something to be expected. Let's take a look at where these smartphone cameras seriously struggle and the main differentiator between these three cameras. Low light and night video. So far we have seen near identical video performance across each of these three phones in great lighting. It's important to draw a distinction between night still photography and video. All three of these cameras feature excellent night still photography. This night photography takes time to allow light into the sensor and then uses computational photography to produce amazing shots. Low light and night video is the real test because these sensors on these small cameras are so tiny compared to full frame cameras. Let's see how they perform. We start off with the ultra wide lens with its 2.4 aperture. The video captured is extremely dark with substantial grain. What a difference when we swap to the one times lens. The video is a lot more visible with the Max camera pulling ahead with less grain and more clarity. Here we can see the maximum focal lens of each of these cameras without digitally zooming in. The 2.5 lens with the 2.2 aperture on the Max does surprisingly well in picture clarity compared to the two times lens with its 2.0 aperture on the Pro. Here are our lackluster ultra wides again. And what a difference we see when we switch to the 1x1.6 aperture wide lens. The Max is a clear winner when we take a closer look at the detail.
Another example of the ultra wides here. And back to the one times wide. The Max is performing well with less grain and more detail. Check out the truck in the background, the gravel details and the clarity of the sign. Here is the maximum focal length of each of the cameras again. The user interfaces are nearly identical between the three camera phones. Because the screen real estate is large on the Max compared to the Mini, more controls are visible on the Max than on the Mini in the camera app. On all the phones, the user interface elements and CTAs are quite small and could do with some enlarging for pudgy fingers. Commonly used items such as frame rate, zoom toggles, and switching between camera modes all could have improved accessibility by having larger touch area or different navigational patterns to access. Outside of the camera app, the Max, for the most part, enlarges the screen details rather than fitting more details on the screen. It would be useful if Apple implemented a scaling feature found on their laptops. This could allow you to fit more details into the large Mac screen. From a purely camera point of view, the results are quite surprising. All three smartphones are incredibly similar with little differentiation apart from low light video performance. The ultra wide angles still suffer from terrible low light performance, but the wide lens is acceptable on all cameras for general use, even at night. If you're needing a good quality daylight phone that's portable, the Mini is a cute little phone that easily fits into most pockets, while the Max is decidedly bulky. If you're after more zoom range, we'd recommend that you go for the Pro or the Pro Max. Both the Pro and the Pro Max feature a LiDAR sensor to assist with focus in low light. If you're wanting the absolute best video recording in low light, go for the Max, which seems to handle night video a tad better. Bear in mind that this is a camera phone and not an SLR or mirrorless full frame camera. If you need excellent performance in low light, Spend a few thousand dollars extra and purchase the Sony A7S III full frame camera. Which model do we want to use? The Max is definitely winning if it weren't for the hefty price tag. But we'll be testing the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra shortly, so stay tuned for that. Be sure to subscribe for upcoming videos like these.